Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome to our virtual services. Come on in. We're getting, giving you an opportunity as pleasant parishioners and partners of PG to come in and share with us. Uh, happy Valentine's Day to all. Happy Valentine's Day. We're going to give just a moment uh, for you to come in and then we will get into the word of God. We will get into the word of God. The word of God says, I will bless the Lord at all times. We're calling us into worship. I will bless the Lord at all times. God's praise shall continually be in our mouths. Uh, despite the snowstorms, uh, despite the storms of life, uh, despite the hardships that we face, despite the difficulties uh, that we may encounter, um, let us always give thanks to God for who God is and what God does. Uh, God's praise shall continually, continually be in our mouths. Brothers and sisters, we are uh, calling you into the presence of God. Uh, this is time to worship. This is time to worship. We are calling you into the presence of God. We're calling you to into the presence of God. Uh, and if you've had some hardships and uh, if you've had um, some failures in your life, uh, I solicit that you put all of those troubles into God's hands uh, and so that you can center yourself for worship. Um, Jesus calls for us. He, he calls for us to uh, come unto me, all of you who are heavy loaded or heavy laden. Uh, and I will uh, give you rest. Uh, brothers and sisters, we are thankful that you are here with us on this morning. Uh, we want to just get to the word of God. I know this is cut and dry. We, we've we got a word for you. Uh, but we want you to hear ye what the word of God says. So we just want to kind of give you a moment or two. I know that there are pleasant parishioners, partners of PG, there are family members that are still coming in. So we want to just give you an opportunity to come in before we jump into the word of God. We just want to give you that time. Uh, Y'all come on in, come on in, put some praise hands up, some emojis, some smiley faces as you enter uh, the presence of God. We're thankful today for you. We're thankful today for you. Again, we wish you a happy Valentine's Day. I want to also say this. Valentine's Day is not only for couples. It's not only for couples because long ago, Jesus uh, shared this commandment. He said, this is a new commandment. This is a new commandment that I share with you, that you love ye one another as I have also loved you. So brothers and sisters, love is a commandment of God. Love is a commandment of God. Love is a characteristic of a believer. Love is a commandment of God, and love is also a characteristic of a believer. If you don't love folks, then perhaps you want to, that, that may be a litmus test uh, about your uh, closeness to God. Are you really a believer if you don't have love, right? We don't want to be that person that has a whole lot of sounding brass uh, and being tinkling single symbols because we don't have love. We just uh, offering the opportunity for those of you to come in and uh, come into our live. Uh, we're just offering that opportunity for you to come into our live. Um, and then we'll jump into our word. We'll jump into our word. We'll jump into our word. Amen. 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 Well, what we want to do is share a word from God. Uh, I know we're down to the bare bones on today. I thank God for the pleasant parishioners for being faithful and being patient with us. Uh, I just believe that God is going to show uh, God's self uh, and manifest his glory 
in this new year. Let's just make it through this season. So brothers and sisters, on this day, we want to go to the word of God. We want to go to the word of God. We want to go to the word of God. We want to go to Exodus. We want to go to Exodus 3, uh, 3, 1 through 6. Exodus 3, 1 through 6. And right before we jump into the word of God, we want to consult with the God of this word. God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your power. Now, God, we ask that you give me permission to give proclamation. God, in the name of Jesus, we pray that someone is helped during this time. We pray uh, that someone finds you or rediscovers the importance of being connected to you. God, thank you for this opportunity to share with the uh, friends and families, uh, the parishioners and partners and uh, God, we pray now that uh, your word finds fertile ground in someone's heart. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, let us all say together virtually, amen. Come on, somebody put some emojis up. Come on, somebody raise your hands. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen, 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 amen. Brothers and sisters, Let's jump into the word of God. Let's jump into the word of God. Exodus 3, uh, 1 through 6. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. The New Living Translation. You may be reading a different uh, uh, translation of the biblical text, uh, but I'm reading the New Translation, and there you will find words similar to this. It says this. One day Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led the flock into the wilderness and came to Sinai, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire in the middle of a bush. Moses stared in amazement, though the bush was engulfed in flames, it didn't burn up. I think that's something worth sharing again. Although the bush was engulfed in flames, it did not burn up. This is amazing, Moses said to himself. Why isn't that bush burning up? I must go see it. When the Lord uh, saw Moses coming to take a closer look. God called to him from the middle of the bush. Listen to what the text says. God called to Moses from in the middle of the bush. He says, Moses, Moses. In other words, God called Moses by name. Moses says, here I am. Do not come any closer, the Lord warned. Take off your sandals, for you are standing on holy ground. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. When Moses heard this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. And brothers and sisters, just for a moment of better, I just want to use as uh, a thematic thrust for the time that we share together a burning love, a burning love. I know that many of you have gone out to buy, buy expensive Valentine's Day gifts, but brothers and sisters, let me share with you uh, about a burning love. Uh, August 1st, 1972, uh, Elvis Presley released the biggest hit single that had been recorded in the United States at that time. It was entitled A Burning Love. The lyrics of this song suggest that the fire of love burned so intensely that it burned all the way down through to his soul. Elvis uses this allegorical expression because 
uh, we are all instinctively enamored uh, by the power and the presence of an embering and a burning fire. Brothers and sisters, fires uh, tamed can be comfortable. As a matter of fact, I'm sure that many of us have our fireplaces burning during this frigid weather. Fires tamed can be comfortable. Yet all the while, a single flame has the dormant ability to consume everything in its path. A continuing fascination it is for most of us when we think about fire. As a matter of fact, my children sit before the fireplace and they are thrilled and enamored about how the fire consumes each log. The largest fire or the largest forest fire on record, it burned 13,500 square miles of an Indonesian island. The fire burned from February to June in 1983, devastating an area bigger than the state of Massachusetts and Connecticut combined. At the same time, in February 1983, a firestorm ravaged southwestern Australia uh, in a gale force wind that blew within it for hours. The coastline was fully engulfed with raging flames. Rich farmlands and fragrant uh, eucalyptus forests were quickly reduced to what seemed only to have ever uh, been just a small garden. Brothers and sisters, 75 people died there and $2.5 billion in property damage happened. There is something breathtaking, brothers and sisters, about such consuming fires. Hence, we better understand now the ferocity in which Elvis Presley sings about a burning love. Brothers and sisters, there's something about a fire that resembles love. It burns uncontrollably. It moves in a way, brothers and sisters, that cannot be stopped. But as destructive as these huge fires were, and as incandescent as the king of rock and roll was, those fires lacked the power of one small fire that burned more than 3,000 years ago in an Egyptian desert on the exterior mountain side of Mount Sinai. This fire was confined to one desert bush which burned, but yet the anomaly apprehends my attention in that, brothers and sisters, what is a funny about this account is that that bush burned, but it did not burn up. It burned, but it did not burn up. The text shares with us in verse 2, uh, Behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. I want to pause parenthetically to share with you, brothers and sisters, uh, I, I want to share with you that we serve a God who is known to be present with us. We serve a God who is known to be in the midst of a sometimes burning hot fire, but God does not allow us to be consumed in the flames. I wish I had just one witness today that helps us to understand that we serve a God who allows us to experience hot and hellish situations, but the blessing about God is that God allows us to experience hell, but we're not burned up. Yet, brothers and sisters, even though your situation may get hot, uh, you may it may get hot in here. But brothers and sisters, understand that God will not allow you to be consumed. And I wish I had a witness, brothers and sisters, because I would tell you that God 
understands our lives and God moves in such a way that when it gets hot and when our lives get to a place where it feels like temperature and mother nature is pressing hard down upon us, God is able to map to mother nature and cause her to relax the laws of science so that God can deliver his children out of unscrupulous situations. Fire in the text and in the world of the biblical context, it becomes a meaning of a manifestation of God. If you look in the biblical text, all throughout the biblical text, brothers and sisters, we see that wherever fire appears, Fire is a manifestation of the presence of God. You all come on and walk with me for just a few moments. You walk with me through Exodus 13 and 21 when the Lord led the Israelites through the wilderness. The text says that he was a pillar of cloud in the daytime, but then at nighttime he was a pillar of fire. Another hot situation when King Nebuchadnezzar called for everyone to bow down before him, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused and said, uh, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from a fiery furnace. I'm just so glad today, brothers and sisters, that we serve a God who is known for working through fiery situations and delivering us from fiery furnace. Brothers and sisters, the three Hebrew boys were thrown into the fiery furnace, but God again manipulates the fire. And I bless God because those who desired to throw them into the fire were consumed, but the folks that were in the fire because they were covered up by the hand of God, they were not consumed. Keep on walking with me through the canonical text, 1 Kings 18 and 38. Elijah is surrounded by danger. And I just want to share with you that sometimes in life, you will be surrounded by danger. You will be surrounded by disturbance. You will be surrounded by difficulty. You will be surrounded by dismay and distress. But if you look at what happened in the text, Elijah prays to God and God shows up and he sets a wet altar on fire without any matches, without any lighter fluid, or without any coal because God is a God that shows up unexpectedly and he delivers his children abundantly. When Elijah finished his earthly assignment, a chariot of fire and horses, uh, uh, they appeared out of heaven to brighten up the sky. All I'm just trying to tell somebody today is that God works through mysterious situation. As we return to the text, uh, seeing a burning bush on the side of the mountain to Moses, it seemed like it was impossible. It seemed like it was implausible. It seemed like it was irrational. It seemed like, brothers and sisters, that it was improbable. And brothers and sisters, what I share with you is that sometimes God works in the impossible. Sometimes God works in the improbable. God works in the irrational. God works where it seems like God can't work. But brothers and sisters, what God ends up doing, as a matter of fact, brothers and sisters, God works in uncanny situations. As a matter of fact, it was so uncanny that Moses had to investigate. The text says in verse 3 that Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight. And I must see the bush is burning, but it's not burning up. Moses was looking toward the Lord and God got his attention through a burning bush. Moses was trying to comprehend the incomprehensible. Brothers and sisters, sometimes God tends to do things in our lives that we cannot 
comprehend. As a matter of fact, the seasoned saints would say it like this. It says God works in mysterious ways. Sometimes God does things that we don't understand. We have to understand that the presence of God in our lives does, does not always operate out of those things that we can understand. God works in our lives sometimes in a way that is not probable. And oftentimes the Lord decides to move in that which we think is impossible. Oftentimes we seek to understand what is logical, but many times God functions in the illogical. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul, he says it like this, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Uh, also, he, he doubles down on that particular thrust in 1 Corinthians 1 and 21. He says God uses the foolishness of preaching to save those who believe. All I'm trying to tell you is that sometimes God uses what I call a paradoxical promotion. In other words, God sometimes uses unlikely people. Sometimes God uses unlikely places. Sometimes God uses unlikely events to be a blessing to folks who believe in him. Sometimes God uses unlikely things to be a blessing to God's children. All things, if you remember, all things work together for the good of uh, them that love him and those who are called according to God's purpose. Brothers and sisters, we must understand that sometimes God uses certain things to be a blessing to us. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, God uses our enemies to elevate us. Sometimes God uses our sorrows to make us rejoice. I'm about to shout by myself. God sometimes uses our pain to promote us. Sometimes God calls us uh, to some odd things to help mature our faith. God will tell you, uh, brothers and sisters, some odd things to help to get you to grow. Perhaps God will tell you stuff like this. God will tell you love your enemies. That's strange to me. Sometimes uh, God will tell you to bless them that curse you. Sometimes the Lord will give you a paradoxical promotion by telling you to do good to them that hate you. Sometimes God will lift you up in an uncanny way by telling you to pray for them that despitefully use you. Brothers and sisters, sometimes God calls us to embrace those that persecute us. But brothers and sisters, what I'm sharing with you is that sometimes God seeks to grow our faith in inconventional and unconventional ways. One thing that I've discovered that if that you cannot arrive to the level of Christian maturity uh, on your own. Sometimes God has to push you and sometimes God has to use these ways and mechanisms and events to get you to come back into his prison. Brothers and sisters, uh, one of the things that I see about the text, the text teaches me, is that God prepares us to be in his presence. God prepares us to be in his presence. If you travel with me to the world of the text, Moses had been away for 40 years. When God suddenly called Moses back unto himself, and explain the plan that God had for Moses' life. I want to pause right here parenthetically and say to somebody, there's somebody who has been out of the presence of God 
for a long time. There's somebody, I don't know who I'm talking to on this virtual line today, but brothers and sisters, there's somebody perhaps who has not prayed during this entire pandemic. There's someone who has not lifted up holy hands in prayer during this entire pandemic. There's someone who has been aloof, afar, and away from God during a certain time, but God right now, through the sound of my voice, he's pointing to you and he's opening up an invitation for you to be back into the presence of God. Now is your time. God is calling you and God is speaking to you. God is opening up an opportunity for you to be back in the presence of God. As we look at the text, again, he was away from God. But brothers and sisters, God called him back. And sometimes the Lord calls us back through the circumstances that happen in our lives. God invites us back to his presence through issues that we face, through health failures and free and break ups. Brothers and sisters, is there anyone here who has found their self bringing that, coming back to God because of things that have happened in their lives. In the text, look at the text. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from a bush. And I thought I'd tell you that God has a particular way of moving our lives toward confrontation with him. No matter how you try to run, God has a particular way of moving our lives to confrontation with God. Brothers and sisters, I remember there was an old deacon uh, at Magnolia First Baptist Church. He used to say that you can't run from God. Bless God for Deacon Richmond. He used to say that you can't run from God. Your legs are too short. You can't fight with God because God's arms are too long. Brothers and sisters, what I'm sharing with you is that you can try to live life on your own accord, but there are events, there are situations that move you back into confrontation with God. You can't go over it. Granddaddy used to tell me there's some things in life that you can't go over. There's some things that you can't go under, but God calls you to go through them. And when you go through them, brothers and sisters, many times we are moving toward that moment without even knowing that God is moving us back to God's self. Brothers and sisters, uh, in reflecting over flying, uh, we can be flying in a jetliner going at 600 miles per hour and not even know that we're moving. God does a similar thing to us, brothers and sisters. God moves us toward God's self. Sometimes God has to take us out of our comfort zone and we don't even realize God has to take us from the comfort and convenience and complacency and consequential and have a so to have a consequential encounter with God. As we follow the narrative of Moses, we discover that God did three 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 things to prepare Moses for an encounter with God and I'm persuaded that God still uses many things and God uses many methods in moving us into a more faithful relationship with God. Brothers and sisters, one way that God moves us into a more faithful relationship is devastating events. Have you ever had a loved one die and that moved you back into the presence of God. Have you ever had to lose a job? It moved you back into the presence of God. Have you ever had crises in your life that moved you back into the presence of God? Sometimes God tends to move us back into his presence through devastating events. Because God loves us. He, number one. He prepares us 
or his presence. Number two, he reveals his presence. And number three, God embraces us through his presence. Since, brothers and sisters, I, I, I share this with you, there's, uh, we, we ought to, uh, the Lord uh, sometimes uh, gets in our presence and sometimes the Lord tries to put us in our presence. I, I just share with you, since it is Valentine's Day, uh, uh, allow me to share this secret with you. When I first laid eyes on Petrina, uh, I knew I wanted to encounter her. And because I knew I wanted to encounter her, I would strategically position myself where I thought she might be. Brothers and sisters, sometimes I used to get into the hallways and I lean against the wall and I look up with the rock eyebrows. In other words, brothers and sisters, I would position myself to be where I thought she would be. You see, the interesting thing about God is that we don't prepare ourselves to meet God, but God prepares us to meet him. Moses, uh, when we look at Moses, Moses, uh, the Lord prepared Moses to meet him. And many times when God is preparing us to have an encounter with him, we don't even know it. And all I'm saying is that when you experience certain circumstances in your life, perhaps God was preparing you to meet him when you had a health failure. Perhaps God was preparing you to have a rendezvous with Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. When you, brothers and sisters, were ostracized on your job about how you walk and talk with Christ, God is preparing you with an encounter with God's blessings. When you were crying all night long, God was just preparing you to have an encounter with joy because one scripture says that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I'm done. I'm done. But when you are trying to make peace, uh, God is bringing you into his peace. Brothers and sisters, we must remember, we must remember that there is no greater love than this, that a man would lay down, that's a burning love, that a man would lay down his life for a friend. One more thing that I want to lift from the text that may be helpful to you. Brothers and sisters, in order for us to enjoy intimacy with God, and in order for us to be in the presence of God, if you look at the text, there was one other way that God was preparing Moses to be in God's presence. One of the things he did, and what I get from the text Brothers and sisters, there are some things that before you come into the presence of God, there are some things that you got to take off. Y'all come, come back this way. Come back. That before you get into the presence of God, there are some things that you've got to take off. If you look at the text, the Lord prepared Moses and he told Moses, he said, hey, wait a minute, before you come uh, onto this hollowed and sacred ground, you've got to take off your sandals. Sandals perhaps had been through uh, manure. Uh, sandals had walked through all kinds of uh, unclean things and germs. Brothers and sisters, there are some things in our lives, some stuff that we got to take off. We, we, we've got to take off some stuff so that we can get into the presence of of God and have an intimate experience with God. Again, the text shares with us in verse 5 that before Moses could get close to God, the Lord said, don't come any closer, but take off your shoes from on your feet for the place that you are standing is holy ground. You can't get close to God with a whole lot of dirty stuff on. You've got to take some of that dirty stuff off. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul tells us, in Ephesians 4 and 22, throw off that old dirty stuff. Throw off that old sinful 
nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Brothers and sisters, all I'm trying to tell you today is that you've got to disrobe from some filthy things before we can truly experience the presence of God. You've got to take off pride before you get into the presence of God. You've got to take off selfishness before you get into the presence of God. You've got to take off that big old head, that ego, before you get into the presence of God. You've got to take off that negativity. You always got something negative to say about the church of God. You've got to take off the negativity before you get into the presence of God. You've got to take off doubt before you get into the presence of God. You've got to take off fear before you get into the presence of God. You've got to take off grief before you get into the presence of God. All of these things you've got to take off before you truly enjoy a relationship with God. Brothers and sisters, God has a burning love for us. And I beseech you, brothers and sisters, that you might fall in love with Christ uh, on this Valentine's Day. Fall in love with Jesus Christ because I guarantee you that would be the best thing that you would have ever done. The door of the church is open the door of the church is open. We bless God for you. We thank God for your presence. Thank you for sharing with us virtually. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, you didn't have to do it. Uh, there are so many other virtual worship services uh, that you could have tuned in but to, but we thank God for you tuning in to us. Brothers and sisters, we're just a, a, a small church uh, who is striving to become pleasantly purposeful for all people, all people who engage us, we want to become pleasantly purposeful for you. So we thank you for uh, tuning in today and the door of the church is open. If you like to become a pleasant parishioner, you can do so uh, one of three ways. You can reach out to a pleasant parishioner that is a member of Pleasant Green and that member will in turn share with leadership your desire to become a member of Pleasant Green or a member of the body of Christ. Also, brothers and sisters, you can also call the church office. The church office uh, is 314-535-7548. You can leave a message there, brothers and sisters. And within 48 hours, if you leave a message, we will return uh, your call. Or if you if you want to uh, send a uh, an email, an email, uh, you can send an email at ghpruitt uh, at gmail.com. And again, brothers and sisters, we will respond to you within 48 hours. ghpruitt at gmail.com. We will respond to you within 48 hours. Brothers and sisters, thank God for those of you who understand the importance of stewardship. God gives us resources. God gives us money. Uh, and God gives us things, talents, tents, and treasures so that we can be good stewards over what God has given us. Thank you for those of you who have been good stewards and those of you who have uh, mastered generosity. We thank you for your faithfulness in generosity. If you want to, um, perhaps if you have not been faithful in your stewardship, I want to share with you a few ways that you can do that. You can do that. Uh, by sending a check or a money order uh, to the, the uh, campus uh, of Pleasant Green at 1220 REV GH Pruitt Place, St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. You can send a check or a money order to REV GH Pruitt Place. Uh, it's St. Louis, Missouri, 63113, brothers and sisters, and we are forever grateful for your generosity. Also, if you're technologically savvy, you can log on to our website at www.pgmbcstl.org. That is www.pgmbcstl.org, and you can click on our giving 
and you can give electronically. Thank you so much, brothers and sisters, for your faithfulness in your generosity. Also, brothers and sisters, you can be looking toward an email. You can be looking for toward a Facebook post. Uh, you can be looking for uh, to a robocall because I want to remind us that the Lenten season starts on February the 17th and it will end on April 1st. We will be sharing with you a few ways that the parishioners are engaging together to make space for God in our lives. Again, we will be engaging uh, from February 17th uh, to April the 1st. We will be sharing on each Wednesday. Again, you can be looking for more information on that on Robocall, on the Facebook post, uh, or brothers and sisters, you can look for an email. I pray that you have gotten something uh, in your home uh, that I've gotten uh, through the preparation of God's word in my heart. I pray that it has been worthwhile. I pray that you have gotten something out of this virtual experience. Brothers and sisters, we just want to pause for a moment of prayer. I pray again uh, that this experience has been inspiring. I pray that uh, this uh, worship experience has been encouraging. And I pray that this worship experience has been invoking, invoking to for you to lead a life that is uh, satisfying in the sight of Jesus Christ. Now, brothers and sisters, let us go before God in prayer. God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your parishioners. We thank you for our worship visitors. And God, now we ask that you bless us. And that you have mercy upon us. And Lord God, that we you that you give us peace now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceedingly joy to the only wise God, our Savior. Be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. Until we meet again, God bless you.